Hello and welcome to Somerville Media Center Live. I'm Joe Lynch. Today is September 22nd. I am pleased to be joined once again by President, Council, President of the Somerville City Council, Matt McLaughlin. Matt McLaughlin, how are you? Doing all right, Joe. How are you doing? Terrific. Terrific. Matt, I wanted to start off with some grim milestone here in the United States. 200,000 people have passed due to the COVID virus. 9,300 in Massachusetts. And as we chatted before the show, the Somerville number unfortunately is ticking up. We now have 42 deaths being reported as a result of COVID. Matt, just very quickly, um, the pandemic is still a pandemic. No one has downgraded this thing. There are still people getting infected. It is affecting the city of Somerville. We're noticing on the dashboard from the health department that 02145 has the highest rate of infection. Um, just a little bit in terms of the city council and their ongoing efforts uh, with COVID. Um, yeah, so we're still going about it the same way as before um, and encourage people to continue social distancing, continue to stay six feet apart, continue to wear a mask. Um, there's a number of factors that may have led to this increase. Uh, complacency probably being the number one because people think that it is over and it's definitely not. Uh, so what city council is now, we're now meeting bi-weekly, we were meeting weekly before uh, for our updates and we've moved to bi -week, um, every other week, I should say. Um, bi-monthly, uh, getting updates from the city. From the city. Uh, we're still being very cautious about reopening the school, um, looking at uh, just trying to maintain what we already had, because I think it was working. I think complacency is part of it. And it's also just the factor that people were always going to get sick, unfortunately. And the whole goal from the very beginning was to flatten the curve so that when people do get sick, uh, our hospitals are able to handle it. Uh, so that's where we're at right now. I would encourage everybody to keep doing what we've been doing because it was working and it's very difficult because you're managing 80,000 people trying to get them and then everybody from outside of the city trying to get them to do the right thing. I understand that it gets difficult at times, but it has been working. So we got to stick to it. Yeah, it's the complacency, Matt, and there are more people on the move than we had, say, back in June, July. There are more people traveling within our city. So, you know, if you come from outside of the city, please abide by our rules and regulations. Um, and if you're within the city and you're just coming back after the summer season, um, be cautious. Matt, I wanted to talk about a couple of things. You did touch on the school reopening. We're not gonna spend a whole lot of time on that today, primarily because it's only day two. Uh, actually day three of the kids going back and the teachers and um, any sense anecdotally from folks that you know how the virtual learning is going after well we're on day three anything you've got well so we had a school committee meeting last night um, and several parents got up um, who were hoping that the schools would open sooner rather than later uh, they're gonna make a decision in December about that um, and they all argued that the virtual learning just isn't the same, especially for people with special needs, uh, people who need that extra attention. The virtual learning isn't going to be as good as in person. And my answer to that is, yes, that's obviously the case. And we still have to do it this way. Um, I do think the students, no matter how good their teachers are, no matter how hard they try, are probably deprived of some learning uh, from not being there in person, but that is, we'd rather have them be deprived of learning than deprived of life at this point. Uh, so, you know, I, I believe the teachers and the schools are trying to educate the kids as best as possible remotely. It's not gonna be the same, and we can't claim that it will be the same, but it's a safety precaution that's necessary right now. And it's a difficult decision. It's an extremely difficult decision to make. You know, the parents are worried about their kids learning, um, Parents are worried about the kids' safety. City's worried about both. Um, but you know, as I, I, the reason I wanted to, to state those numbers clearly at the beginning of this show is that people are still dying from complications of COVID. And I think we need to keep that in the forefront of our minds. So virtual learning, 
Um, last week, we had Carrie Norman, the, the chair of the Somerville School Committee. She was talking about the fact that we are, we as a city, the school system itself, including the school committee, are constantly assessing progress. They're constantly assessing where we are, what needs to be fixed, what can we eliminate. But, um, you know, I'm going to paraphrase Carrie. They're going to be assessing this thing right up until probably after Thanksgiving and see whether or not it makes sense to go back sometime in January. So I think that's about yeah. all we can really say at this point. Yeah, and I, and I think that's right, that we're going to keep assessing. And, you know, I do understand the frustration from a lot of parents and youth, but these are the precautions we're taking. Um, and I just feel like it's necessary at this point. We and, are, yeah, uh, we haven't gone out of the woods yet. Right, exactly right, Matt. We're not out of the woods. I mean, yeah. you cannot push this thing and then only have to turn around in, in a 14 day period and shut everything down again. So, yeah, and I'd also just add to you know, the school committee is meeting several times a week uh, discussing this. So, this is something that everyone's taking seriously. Everybody wants the kids back in school, but we also want them to be healthy. Well said. What's on the top of the mark? I, I think you have a city council meeting uh, coming up on Thursday. Yeah, we don't have the agenda yet, though, so I can't really tell you what's on the agenda right now. Okay. Yeah. How about last city council meeting? I know there was a bunch of stuff that you guys were, uh, you folks were uh, addressing and moving forward with. Want to give us a brief update? Yeah, so, I mean, last week we discussed uh, the anti-gang ordinance. Uh, that was repealed unanimously by the city council. Uh, that's the item that stood out the most, probably because it was my item. Um, other than that, we had some basic maintenance issues. We had, we had basic city council stuff, uh, nothing huge. How about city finances? We got an update on that. We're going to have enough money going forward, or we got a problem next year. I mean, I think it's the same status as before is, you know, we're, we're fortunate to be in a situation uh, where we have, we're doing pretty well financially, but that could change next year. Um, I do know that the mayor just announced recently that he's given $500,000 to arts programming, which is uh, money that wasn't in the original budget. So if I, you know, I support giving money to the artists and I hope that the fact that we have $500,000 lying around means that uh, we're doing well financially. I hope so. So you think that's coming out of the bottom of a closet or a bureau or something, or is that going to require some fancy footwork on bonding or reallocation of other funds? Well, I don't think it'll be bonding. Um, it seems like I think it might be uh, free cash, but we haven't had it presented to us just yet. So this might be money that does exist that we're just not using. And, I'm always, uh, you know, happy, again, happy to support the arts, but I'm also very curious where the money's coming from. So that'll be referred to committee soon enough, and we'll figure that part out. But I do think, regardless of what we do with the money, it's a sign that we are on good financial footing. Unfortunately, as we've discussed before, um, you know, the big damages to COVID is going to be felt next year in the, the next year's budget. Yeah, I was on the call last week with um, the mayor held his town hall for the arts community. Um, and it's really heartbreaking when you hear some of the stories, you know, the, the singu singular artists who formerly were able to make a living, you know, just being a single performing artist or they were supplementing their own income. Um, that has pretty much dried up at this point. But some of our arts organizations, um, you know, Somerville Media Center considers itself uh, one of the arts organizations in the city. Um, and we fully support anything that the city can do for the arts community. Um, the Arts Council, I know, is working very hard in trying to connect different organizations with grants that may be coming out of the federal or the state. Um, but I think that half a million dollars that the mayor is committing is an immediate need for a lot of these organizations that may be teetering on the brink of closing. Um, you know, some of, I, I don't wanna cross over into something else I do, but you know, the performing arts, whether they're performing at Arts at the Armory or Once or any of the restaurants that typically have entertainment, 
by performers. Um, it is a critical juncture for them with the advent of outdoor seating going away that shrinks their customer base because the customer base will have to be going indoors. And it's interesting, I saw a poll uh, that was published yesterday about um, how do you feel most comfortable dining out going forward into the winter months? Will you continue to dine out outside during the cold months? Will you go back inside to a restaurant or will you just do takeout um, and delivery? 33% stuck with, we're just gonna do takeout and delivery. And then the other, the other two categories, three categories trailed off into the teens. So it's very clear to me that people still don't feel comfortable going back inside a restaurant. Um, they felt very comfortable during the summer being outside. Um, but as you know, the weather changes everything in New England, Matt. Yeah. Well, I think I'm one of those people probably um, that I prefer to sit outside. I, I preferred sitting outside even before COVID. Um, but I'm, I'm one who's not ready to sit inside myself. Um, even though there are places that are open, I, I choose to not sit inside right now. Um, I have gone takeout and delivery and sat outside at a few restaurants, but right now I'm not doing that. Um, so, and, and I should also just add to, um, that 500,000 to the arts, a major reason we're doing this is because there are a lot of businesses, like you mentioned that don't fall under the category of uh, aid from the state. Uh, so this is what that's about, is trying to get aid to people who did not qualify for assistance when all this happened. Yeah, it's gonna, be, it's gonna be, take a lot of creativity going forward this winter to try to keep a lot of the establishments up and operating and running. Um, I wanna go to something, Matt, maybe you, you know, outside of your city council presidency, um, if you want to make uh, a statement on the national front, and it's something I've, I'm sure that you've thought about, I am positive you've thought about it, is with the passing of Supreme Court Justice um, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, um, the Republicans are now rallying around the president and trying to jam, jam their nominee into the Supreme Court. Any sense... Um, from, from your perspective, I don't want to put you on the spot, but I'm going to put you on the spot. From your perspective, is there anything that, that Democrats or unenrolled voters who don't like this, is there anything that we can do to prevent it from happening? I don't think so. Um, no, I don't think so at all. I think, you know, for, well, first let me back up and say, you know, I spoke at a uh, phone bank for Joe Biden a few last Sunday with Councilman Mark Niedergang. And we gave a moment of silence for Ruth Bader Ginsburg and talked about what she did, the life she lived and why it was important and how her life had meaning through all the great uh, things that she accomplished in her life. Uh, and now it's up to us to give her death meaning. Uh, so I'm encouraging people who are upset about this, who mourn her passing to take action and to get Joe Biden elected. Um, and I don't think it's unfair to say that. I think one of her dying wishes was to have a new president appoint uh, her successor. So unfortunately, I don't think the Democrats can do anything about it because they don't have the numbers. And when this first happened, I saw uh, people say, oh, you know, maybe we'll get this Republican or this Republican to side with us. And I immediately said, that's not gonna happen. It's like, they, they are in lockstep and have been dying to take over the Supreme Court. So outside, I don't know if a filibuster can prevent it from happening, um, but that would be the only option I can think of. And there's also avenues around that if they needed to. I think they're gonna get their Supreme Court appointment. And I think it's very, of course, it's immensely hypocritical that with three months left in the, until an election, uh, or two months now, they're going to appoint somebody when Obama was president and had 10 months left in his presidency. They said, we have to wait for a new president. But it's not surprising at all. It's a party of hypocrites. We all know the reasons. We all know the reasons why they're taking what their former words off the table. Um, and this morning, 
uh, Mitt Romney, Senator Mitt Romney from Utah, former governor of Massachusetts, just announced that he is for moving ahead with the nomination and eventually the confirmation. Here's the problem with um, one party, the Democrats are unenrolled, that are working so hard uh, to get their uh, senators elected, you know, or flipping certain states. The problem comes in, Matt, is that they will not be sworn in with the very few exceptions. They won't be sworn in until after the president gets his way with the nomination and the confirmation. That's the problem. He's still between November election and the end of December and the inauguration day, he can still do and perform as president, even though he may be a lame duck if he loses the election. He can still get it done in the two month period, November and December. Yeah, well, they have the numbers on their side right now. And uh, again, people were expecting maybe a few Republicans would be swayed. Why? They, this is something they've wanted for a long time. Uh, you can't count on the Susan Collinses of the world to stand up and say, oh, wait, you know, this is uh, hypocritical because she'll get, she'll have her election in November and then whether she wins or loses, she can do whatever she wants after that. So I don't know if Trump is going to push to have a new nominee before the election. But like you said, even after the November election, when all these people are lame ducks, they could do whatever they want. And this is something they've wanted to for. They've been fighting for this for decades is to, and this is why they prioritize packing the court system. Like there's, there's dozens or hundreds of federal offices that are vacant right now because the, the Senate's uh, conf the confirmations committee is focusing exclusively on judges. And it's not just the Supreme Court, it's all the lower courts as well that they're packing with conservative judges. So this is something that I don't have a positive thing to say about this. It's like, they're gonna win this one and we have to take the Senate and the presidency uh, in exchange for that. Well, it's not, it's not good news when, when Romney says, no, he's gonna side with the Republicans and it's not good news um, when Susan Collins makes one statement one day and then she may change her mind the next. So it's never they, a good idea. It's never a good idea to count on the goodwill of Republicans. Ah, well, I I think that's a very succinct statement, Matt. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just I don't think anybody can doubt where you fall on this thing. Yeah, I, I mean, I hey, you know, well, I'm here to talk about COVID and everything, but you ask for my opinion. It's like this is this is not good for anybody uh, no, to and, have and, the Supreme Court. So sl so slanted in the other direction. And you know, I try, Matt, I try not to flatter any of you that come on the shows, but one of the things I enjoy about you is the straight talk, is that you don't, you don't butter it up and you know, try to say, well, you know, this, is, this is really ice cream when I know it's yogurt. I mean, yeah. <laughs> so thank you for that though, thank you. Going forward, we have um, cold winter months coming. Any changes to any changes that you know of to any parking restrictions we're going to have? I mean, locally, let's take a look at, you know, streets are still getting repaved. Um, things have been upended all during the summer. Any major changes coming that we should be aware of through the end of the year and the winter months? I haven't heard of anything. Have you? No. <laughs> I was going to say. No, but I always ask the guys who's sitting at the table if they know of anything. So. No, I haven't heard of any uh, changes in traffic. If anything, hopefully things are getting better because our bridges are finally open. Um, yeah, and no, no, no new updates is from my end, at least. And we've been watching the Green Line uh, progress faster than anyone uh, I thought imagined, uh, primarily because of all the, the consequential things that are happening because of COVID, is that it's allowing the contractors to move a little faster than they did. Any update on the high school? Oh, you know, the high school, they had an update yesterday, um, but I was actually in a school committee meeting for that. Uh, so I missed that update. Uh, I don't have an update for you right now. All right. Uh, I would just point anybody who wants the update on the high school, um, as far as about a week and a half, two weeks ago, I think the city on the city's website, there is a video that the city posted, um, but I'm not sure how up to date that information is. 
Matt, I know you're going to run. I want to thank you again. You are a trooper coming back, giving us the update, giving us your time. Anything you want to close off with? Closing thoughts. Uh, no. Uh, thank you again for having me. I'll see you again next week and hopefully uh, you know, live to fight another day. I, I, if I could, I guess, leave with some optimism is would the people got to get moving with their feet and their voices and start picking up phones, calling people to get them out to vote in November. Uh, everyone says that every year it's the most important election ever, but this one feels extremely important. So I encourage you to not only vote, but to get other people to vote as well. Well said. If you're new to Somerville and you want to vote from here, please remember that registration, your deadline is October 24th to register to vote. For the Somerville Media Center, I'm Joe Lynch. Thank you once again to Somerville City Council President, Matt McLaughlin. As always, stay safe, stay informed. See you next time. Thank you, Matt. Thanks, Joe.